Welcome listeners. Today, we dive into a range of global developments shaking the world stage. World leaders are reacting to what some are calling history's greatest comeback as Donald Trump secures another major political victory. Meanwhile, European traders are on high alert, hedging against potential tariff risks as the US election results unfold. Over in the Middle East, Iran's currency hits a historic low following Trump's victory, while tensions soar with Hezbollah launching rockets at central Israel, one even striking near Ben Gurion Airport. Elsewhere, urgent developments are happening in Georgia as a court annuls election results in several precincts, and in Germany, the far-right AFD party takes drastic steps against members linked to militant groups. In a shocking maritime incident, a narco-sub carrying tons of cocaine is intercepted by the Mexican Navy in the Pacific Ocean. And on the global security front, North Korea's test of an intercontinental ballistic missile is condemned by the UN Security Council, signaling a new phase in international relations. Stay tuned as we break down these key events and what they mean for the world's political and economic future. World leaders across the globe are reacting to former President Donald Trump's surprising political comeback and return to the White House, calling it history's greatest comeback. One of the first to offer congratulations was Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, currently engaged in a critical fight against Iran and its regional proxies. Netanyahu took to X to celebrate Trump's win, calling it a new beginning for America and a powerful recommitment to the U.S. Israel alliance. Other leaders quickly followed suit. French President Emmanuel Macron expressed readiness to collaborate with Trump again for more peace and prosperity, while Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who shares Trump's firm stance on border control, hailed it as the biggest comeback in U.S. political history. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer emphasized the strength of the U.S.-U.K. relationship and looked forward to years of continued partnership. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, leading his nation through its own existential struggle, praised Trump's commitment to peace through strength and expressed hope for joint efforts to end Russian aggression in Ukraine. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi celebrated Trump's win as a path to renew the India-US strategic partnership, focusing on global peace, stability, and prosperity. El Salvador's President Nayib Bukele, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese also joined in with messages of optimism for collaboration and friendship between their nations and the U.S. The world is watching closely as Trump returns to the global stage, bringing with him both long-standing allies and renewed ambitions for international cooperation. As the U.S. heads to the polls, European traders are closely watching potential shifts in trade and currency markets, hedging against volatility that could come from a Donald Trump victory or a Kamala Harris win. Both candidates have different approaches to trade and spending, creating a high-stakes landscape for European financial markets. Currency Moves European traders are betting heavily on a stronger U.S. dollar, expecting it could surge against the euro if Trump wins. Traders have ramped up short positions on the euro, anticipating a drop that could even approach parity with the dollar. Trump's proposed tariffs on European goods, particularly cars, have amplified these bets, with nearly 4.6 billion euro wagered on the euro falling to or below $1 by next July. The pound is also feeling pressure, with significant bets predicting a fall against the dollar. For a safe haven, traders are looking to the Swiss franc, seen as a reliable hedge during market turbulence. Bond markets. European bonds are attracting investors over U.S. treasuries as U.S. spending plans increase concerns about rising interest rates. The yield gap between 10-year treasuries and German bonds has hit highs, although a Trump win with reduced Ukraine support might force the EU to finance its own defense efforts, increasing European debt and potentially closing this yield gap interest rates and ECB policy. With the U.S. showing stronger economic resilience, the European Central Bank ECB, might be under pressure to cut rates faster than the Federal Reserve, especially if Trump's policies bring further challenges to European exports. Some traders are even betting on a six-fold return if the ECB accelerates its rate-cutting pace to stabilize the Eurozone economy, stock markets, and sector impacts. European stocks are pivoting, 
as investors shift away from sectors tied to Democrat policies, like renewables and companies benefiting from trade stability, which saw a dip last month. Stocks expected to benefit from Trump's proposed reshoring policies and reduced trade tensions are now on the rise, while European automakers could face stiff challenges from new U.S. tariffs on foreign-made cars. Additionally, European defense companies might see a boost if Trump pressures NATO allies to ramp up defense spending. The markets remain tense as traders hedge against both possible outcomes, positioning to ride out the shifts that this election may bring to the European economy. As Donald Trump secures a second term as U.S. president, Iran's currency, the rial, has fallen to an all-time low, hitting 703,000 rials to the dollar before recovering slightly. This sharp decline reflects the ongoing strain on Iran's economy, exacerbated by years of sanctions and the pressures of its nuclear program. The Riles' troubles are not new. In 2015, when Iran struck a deal with world powers over its nuclear program, the Rile stood at 32,000 to the dollar. But since the U.S. pulled out of that deal in 2018, under Trump's presidency, the Rile's value has continued to plunge. On the streets of Tehran, some fear that Trump's policies will worsen the country's social and economic situation, with one student predicting a worsening of the economy and potential unrest. Despite this, Iran's government has tried to downplay the election's impact, maintaining that U.S. policies, whether under Trump or another president, are unlikely to shift dramatically. Yet, the tension between the two nations remains, with both countries locked in a history of conflict dating back to the 1979 U.S. Embassy takeover. Iran's involvement in regional conflicts continues to stretch its resources. Its allies, groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, and Yemen's Houthi rebels, are deeply involved in the ongoing Middle East wars. Israel is pressing its offensive against Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon while tensions with Iran escalate following Israeli strikes on Iranian targets in late October. While many in Tehran hold Trump in disdain, others, like a local taxi driver, express a more pragmatic stance, suggesting they would negotiate with him if it could benefit Iran. The situation remains fluid, with much of Iran's future depending on its relations with the U.S and its ability to navigate its internal and external challenges. The Independent Civilian Commission of Inquiry, investigating the Israeli government's failures leading up to the Hamas attack on October 7, 2023, has issued an urgent request for former Defense Minister Yoav Gallant to testify. The commission emphasizes that Gallant's testimony is crucial for rebuilding public trust and uncovering the truth behind the events. Gallant, who was fired just days earlier, called for a state commission of inquiry in his final address, insisting that transparency and a thorough investigation were necessary to strengthen Israel's future defenses. This marks the second time in less than a month that the commission has sought Gallant's testimony. In late October, the commission had already warned several senior officials, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, urging them to testify before the release of the findings in the coming weeks. On Wednesday morning, Hezbollah launched rocket attacks on central Israel, with one hitting an area near Ben Gurion Airport. While most of the 10 rockets were intercepted by the Israeli defense systems, debris from one intercepted rocket damaged a parked car in Ra'anana, though no injuries were reported. Later in the afternoon, sirens sounded again due to another intercepted rocket. Hezbollah claimed to have targeted the IDF's Tzrifin base near the airport. In southern Lebanon, fighting continued, with an IDF soldier injured in Monday's skirmishes. The Israeli military also carried out airstrikes in Syria, targeting Hezbollah weapon depots near the al qasair area. Additionally, the IDF uncovered and destroyed an underground network in southern Lebanon used by Hezbollah. In a separate development, an Israeli airstrike in the town of Barja, Lebanon, killed at least 30 people. The strike, which hit an apartment building, came without warning, and rescue efforts continue as bodies are recovered from the rubble. On the civilian front, the IDF has urged residents near Hezbollah facilities in southern Lebanon's Nabatea to evacuate due to upcoming airstrikes. Meanwhile, the Lebanese government has filed a complaint with the UN over explosions of Hezbollah communication devices, widely attributed to an Israeli operation. The ongoing conflict has caused significant casualties, 
with over 3,000 dead in Lebanon, including both Hezbollah fighters and civilians. In northern Israel, the death toll includes 40 civilians and over 60 IDF soldiers. Last week, a South Korean delegation briefed NATO allies and Indo-Pacific partners on the alarming deployment of thousands of North Korean troops to Russia's Kursk region, where they are set to participate in the war against Ukraine. This marks a historic and unsettling moment. It's the first time in a century that Russia has invited foreign troops onto its soil, raising serious concerns about the direction of this conflict. Russian President Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine has already been a disaster, and these new alliances with authoritarian regimes like China, Iran, and North Korea signal growing desperation. Russia's military failures have led Putin to rely heavily on these countries for support. China is helping prop up Russia's economy, while Iran is supplying deadly drones and missiles. Now, North Korea is sending troops, ammunition, and ballistic missiles to the battlefield. This is a sign that the war is escalating, and it's no longer just a regional conflict. Russia is suffering heavy losses, with over 1,200 casualties a day. Putin has even resorted to drafting North Korean soldiers as his own forces continue to struggle. But this support doesn't come for free. In exchange, Russia is providing North Korea with military technology that will further destabilize the Korean peninsula. North Korean troops, who haven't fought a war in over 70 years, will now gain valuable experience, while North Korea continues to test long-range missiles in defiance of UN resolutions. The growing military and economic ties between Russia and North Korea are a direct threat to global security. China, as a key player in both countries, has a responsibility to pressure them to stop this dangerous collaboration. So far, NATO allies have provided over 99% of Ukraine's military support. But more is needed to shift the war's trajectory and raise the cost for Putin and his authoritarian partners. It's crucial for the West to remain committed and expand support for Ukraine, while also strengthening ties with Indo-Pacific partners. This means more cooperation on defense production, intelligence sharing, and political support. The financial cost of supporting Ukraine is relatively small compared to the potential cost of failing to stop this growing threat to global security. The question is, can we afford not to act? Germany's far-right party, the Alternative for Germany, AFD, is moving to expel three members who were arrested as part of a police operation targeting an extremist group accused of planning an armed revolt. The AFD, which is polling second nationally, announced that it would initiate legal proceedings to expel the members after they were linked to the Saxonian separatists, a small group driven by racist ideologies and conspiracy theories. The group, which had been training for a potential militant coup, was planning to overthrow the modern German state with aims to establish a new system in the eastern part of the country inspired by Nazism. German officials, including Interior Minister Nancy Faeser, described the operation as successfully thwarting these early-stage coup plans. As part of the raid, police seized unregistered firearms, ammunition, and silencers, though the AFD did not provide details on the identities of the three members involved. The party stated that it has suspended their membership rights until a decision is made by the party's arbitration court, emphasizing that there is no place for extremist views in their ranks. Despite being classified as a suspected extremist group by Germany's domestic intelligence service, the AFD maintains that it is a democratic political party and has challenged the intelligence designation in court. The decision to expel these members signals the party's attempt to distance itself from the radical elements of the group, although its ties to extremist ideologies continue to spark debate. A district court in Georgia has annulled election results in, th in 30 precincts due to violations of voting secrecy. This ruling comes amid widespread allegations of a rigged election and, and a protest sparked by the opposition's refusal to recognize the claimed victory of the ruling Georgian Dream Party, which is seen as friendly to Russia. The court found that voting procedures in the southern towns of Tetri, Tskaro, and Salka had violated voter secrecy. Voters were required to mark their ballots in a way that made their choices visible during the subsequent ballot counting process. The court also pointed out that the District Election Commission failed to properly address complaints, suggesting potential manipulation. 
Although this ruling only affects a small number of polling stations, the Georgian Young Lawyers Association, which filed the complaint, hailed the decision as a precedent for stronger protection of voting rights. The Central Election Commission has the option to appeal the ruling. While official results showed Georgian Dream winning nearly 54% of the vote, opposition leaders and international observers reported widespread issues such as intimidation, ballot stuffing, and vote buying. Following the election, opposition parties called for international leaders to reject the results, while Prime Minister Irakli Kobakidze insisted that the government would be approved despite protests. Georgia's political crisis deepened with accusations that the Georgian Dream Party is steering the country back into Russia's orbit, especially after the controversial foreign agents law led to violent police crackdowns earlier this year. Additionally, the European Commission suspended Georgia's EU accession process, signaling a growing divide between Tbilisi and the West. The Mexican Navy intercepted a narco sub off the Pacific coast, seizing 3.6 tons, or about 8,000 pounds, of cocaine. The sub was spotted 153 miles off the coast of Acapulco, and Navy ships quickly arrived to seize the craft, which was carrying 102 packages of cocaine. The boat, known as a go-fast boat, was a semi-submersible designed to evade detection. Nine crew members were detained, six of whom were foreign nationals, though their specific countries weren't disclosed. These semi-submersibles are often used by drug traffickers to transport narcotics from South America to the U.S. market, typically through the Pacific or the Caribbean. This seizure follows another major operation by the Mexican Navy, which recently captured more than 8.3 tons of drugs from multiple vessels, including a narco sub. So far, under the current administration, over 15,000 kilograms of drugs have been intercepted at sea. The U.S. Coast Guard also reported a significant cocaine seizure earlier this year, including drugs taken from a narco sub. These semi-submersibles are popular with traffickers due to their ability to sometimes evade detection. In Colombia, authorities seized two similar vessels containing nearly five tons of cocaine just this summer. The United Nations Security Council has condemned North Korea's recent Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, test, with a U.S.-led statement supported by 10 of the 15 council members. The test, part of a series of more than 100 missile launches by North Korea since 2022, violates multiple UN resolutions and poses a threat to global peace and security. The statement, backed by countries including the US, the UK, Japan, and South Korea, calls on North Korea to return to negotiations and abandon its missile programs. The group of seven, G7, nations also condemned the launch, emphasizing North Korea's ongoing advancement of its illegal nuclear and missile capabilities. However, Russia and China, North Korea's key allies, did not support the condemnation, blocking any further UN action. The US has criticized Russia in particular for reportedly receiving munitions and troops from North Korea for its war in Ukraine. The UN has imposed sanctions on North Korea since its first nuclear test in 2006, but despite these efforts, Pyongyang continues its missile and nuclear programs. The last sanctions resolution was passed in 2017, and recent attempts to impose new sanctions have been blocked by Russia and China.